Good chilly afternoon, bamboosters. And it's chilly here. But it's also time to dig some bamboo out of a galvanized container. How do I know it's time? Well, I know how long it's been in here. It's been somewhere between eight and 10 years, which is what we anticipate will work for the bamboo in terms of, you know, still maintaining some pretty full foliage and being a screen. Um, this one's starting to thin out. I haven't seen a lot of new shoots in the last couple springs, so that's another way that I know it's pretty root bound. And so the plan is to cut it out in a way that we would call harvesting, which is we know we're gonna replant it. So we're gonna be careful about how we take it out. This is a cordless Sawzall, any brand will do. 12 inch, five teeth per inch, so very rough. And the deal with bamboo is where do we start? Well, I know what we're gonna find in here. We're gonna find a lot of roots running around the edges. And those we're probably gonna harvest for um, just making babies. This looks like a pretty good open spot. So what I like to do is start out and take a chunk. I think I'm gonna sacrifice these and take out a nice big chunk here. So these we can get rid of. So, you know, there's some things that seem really obvious to me, but since you're new to this, I'll explain it to you. Which would be easier for me to get out? A wedge cut like this or a wedge cut like that? Pointing to me, right? Like a triangle. Because if it's, if it's fatter on the back side, it's going to lock itself in, right? So I'm looking for something like this. <laughs> This is a specialized tool. You can see it's been reinforced. Got a big back plate. It's, uh, it was all steel to begin with. We have a, an associate that welds these for us. It started out as the king of spades is the name. You can get it at AM Leonard. If you try to use it like we do, it'll bend. We sharpen it so it can cut. And we take that wedge out roots so deep roots so strong the first one's the hardest one to get out there's a lot of roots in there after that you have a hole to work into so everything's not super compressed And what we're going to look for, if we want to plant any of this, is buds. Roots so deep, roots so strong, roots hold on forever. If you were going to just refresh the bamboo and not dig it all out, i.e. get bamboo to grow into bare spots, you would dig out the bare spots like this, put in some fresh dirt, and it would give the bamboo a space to grow into. And what happens over time is these live, but they don't send out as many leaves. They start to lose branches. So that's the deal with that.
feel the bass. Why are we doing this now? We didn't talk about that. They're dormant. They're about to shoot and grow. So if we get them now before the weather warms up and they start sending that new growth, they won't freak out. So we don't have to top them or do anything weird to keep them from sucking up all the juice and spewing it to the sky, not leaving it for the poor roots. So here we are to finish off the planting of the harvested bamboo that we took out of that container. I'll show you a little bit of container prep here. So we've cleared it out, put our drain rock in the bottom, three quarter inch crushed rock. And we have selected the chunks of bamboo that we want to save. This one, this one, and that one. I am soaking these because these root balls are very dry and it will help them transition into the new soil. Um, this one I will cut down to fit and I'll show you how to do that. We want to save all the rhizome on the outside because that's where all the new growth is going to come from. What I'm going to do is cut off a little bit of the bottom and probably not too much out of the sides because I can just orient it in there to fit. So we want to save as much root mass as we can. You can see the, the old gravel from the old planting. So I'm going to give that a nip with our trusty sawzall. Not much in there, but feeder roots. Nice and soaked. One of the things that happens when they're in those containers too long is it's, it's hard for water to penetrate down into this root mass. Hey. Okay. And I do like to clean them up. Clean off the dead canes or anything that looks scratchy, scraggly, before we put them in. Just makes them, I mean, it won't hurt to leave them on, but it does make them look better. This is a nice, well-draining soil with, um, it's got a good compost in it, probably some lava rock, probably some worm castings, a um, little bit of perlite. I'm gonna put this one right in the middle. Center it in the pot. You know, we're leaving it three or four inches down from the top so we have an area to mulch and have water in there. Um, we don't want to plant it too high. We also don't want to bury the canes. So I'm going to kind of prop that in there. I'm going to throw some dirt in there to keep it there particularly on the back side where it wants to flop to. There we go. Looks 
about right. Uh, now we pack it in there. Firmly packed. Bamboo does not like it to be too loose. It likes to be really tucked in. What I'm going to do is try to get it down to the level of the root ball. We don't want too much up on the canes. I want that one to be a little straighter and straighten it out and now we water it in. Because these are so tall, we may want to tie them up. So if a wind comes up, it might knock them over. So what I'll probably do is put a tea stake in either end and a little crossbar to tie them to until they root in. What I'm going to do is let that sit for about five minutes, drain down, and then do it again. Doesn't hurt to hose down the foliage. And I will probably do that every day for a week or so. It helps. Uh, with transpiration. This bamboo has two jobs right now. Keep the upper growth alive and root in. If there's too much upper growth, you take some out. Since it's dormant, we're not too worried about it right now. And if things start to look shocky, like we water it and it still looks dry, we might thin it a bit. Otherwise, I think that's it, bamboosters. Stand firm on solid ground. Let your roots go way deep down. Have no fear for the